Recently, unfortunate news emerged about the Higgs boson on April 8, 2024. British theoretical physicist Peter Ware Higgs passed away at the age of 94. It was almost 12 years ago, on July 4, 2012, in a fairly inauspicious lecture hall located in Geneva, Switzerland. When Higgs became an iconic figure in modern science. That was the day it was announced that collisions between particles at the Large Hadron Collider facility. Arguably the most ambitious and audacious science experiment ever revealed the existence of the Higgs boson. The discovery of the Higgs boson, named for Higgs himself, has been vital for the field of particle physics. It was the last occupant of the particle zoo that's needed to complete what's known as the standard model of particle physics. The best description we have of the universe on the smallest of scales. For Higgs, born in Newcastle-upon-Tyne in the UK to a Scottish mother and an English father on May 29, 1929. The moment was met with an outflow of emotion. This was unsurprising, given that this announcement represented the culmination of five decades of his work and validated a theory that he refused to give up on. Beyond the culmination of the standard model, the discovery of the Higgs boson signaled the need for physicists to begin exploring physics beyond parameters they were used to, thus setting the course for physics for decades to come. Peter Higgs' contribution to modern physics is absolutely outstanding. His work on quantum field theory led to a theory for which, later on, he would be awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics and explains the mechanism that provides fundamental particles with mass. The 20th century marked the birth of particle physics as a discipline of its own and sparked huge strides in the nascent field. Yet, as that century drew to a close and the particle zoo grew in terms of its occupants, physicists started to wonder why some particles had mass and others, particularly particles of light called photons didn't. By 1964, physicists studying the weak nuclear force which is one of four fundamental forces of nature that determines the atomic decay of elements by transforming protons to neutrons. Concluded something surprising. The carriers of this force, W and Z bosons, should be massless yet, the fact that the weak force appeared strong over short distances and weak over long distances meant they couldn't be massless. If they were, it would risk breaking an important rule of physics called symmetry which ensures the laws of nature are the same however they are viewed. According to CERN, you can think of the symmetry problem as analogous to a pencil standing on its tip a symmetrical system suddenly tipping to point in a preferred direction, thus destroying its symmetry. In 1964, Peter Higgs, Francois Englert and Robert Brout proposed a solution. There might be something, they said, that tricks nature into spontaneously breaking symmetry. So, what could that something be? Higgs and colleagues thought that, when the universe was born, it might have been filled with what's called the Higgs field in a symmetrical, but unstable, state like that precariously balanced pencil. In just fractions of a second, that field, the Higgs field would find a stable configuration, but in doing so, would break its symmetry. This, in turn, gives rise to something called the brout englert higgs mechanism which grants mass to the W and Z bosons and solves the discrepancy. While this would have been a vital theory in its own right, it was later discovered the Higgs field would grant mass to many other fundamental particles, and that the strength of these interactions would give different particles different masses. This meant that, if confirmed, the theory would have major ramifications for science. The next step was getting that confirmation in the shape of the discovery of a particle that would act as a messenger for the Higgs field, the Higgs boson. This search would warrant the construction of the LHC. At 27 kilometers long, it is the largest particle accelerator ever built at a cost of around $4.75 billion. Higgs' work is a major reason why the LHC was constructed in the first place. His predictions provided some of the crucial theoretical guidance as to the energy reach required by the LHC in order to potentially find new physics. In 2012, that expense and 10 years of effort by an international collaboration of 23 CERN member states paid off. A cascade of particles resulting from the decay of Higgs boson particles was created and was captured by both the LHC Atlas detector and the compact muon solenoid detector. 
This was the necessary confirmation for the Higgs field theory. Higgs and Englert would share the 2013 Nobel Prize in Physics for the breakthrough. In Professor Peter Higgs, physics has lost a gentle giant of the field, Higgs' work is rightly celebrated as an incredible feat of curiosity-driven research. His proposal in 1964 about the potential existence of the Higgs field and related particle, the Higgs boson, seemed at the time to be an obscure idea, just one of many theoretical mechanisms put forward to explain unknowns in fundamental physics. It then took almost 50 years and around 13,000 other scientists and engineers to build the experiments Atlas and CMS that enabled the Higgs boson to be discovered in 2012 at the Large Hadron Collider. Higgs' story represents an important lesson for us all about how science works. He would have been the first person to point out that science does not happen on the timescales of a few years. We need to ensure long-term support for curiosity-driven research if we are to make the kinds of breakthroughs in our understanding of the universe that Peter Higgs is celebrated for. Even though we have now discovered it, measuring with precision the properties of the Higgs boson still remains one of the most promising ways of probing physics beyond the standard model, Higgs' work has and will continue to shape the field for many years to come and is possibly the largest success story of 21st century theoretical physics. Imagine an unquantifiable field stretching across time and space to give metaphorical weight to a single, vital moment that changed everything a field that can connect all who learn about that moment itself, to each other. I think Peter Higgs may have liked that idea. The second news with us says, stars make a bigger mess in old galaxies, and scientists just figured out why. The more evolved a galaxy is, the more collectively chaotic the orbits of its many stars are. Our Sun orbits the center of the Milky Way galaxy once every 225 million years. At a velocity averaging 828,000 km per hour, astronomers call this a galactic year. The Sun's path around the galaxy is nearly circular, although it does bob up and down somewhat relative to the plane of the galaxy. In other galaxies, however, the motions of stars have a greater degree of randomness, with their orbits adopting a wide variety of velocities and angles relative to the plane of their galaxy, in elliptical galaxies. This is often easy to explain it's the result of a major galaxy merger that formed the elliptical galaxy and stirred up all the stars like a hornet's nest. But these random motions can dominate in disk galaxies, too. This is strange, since stars in a disk galaxy form in a narrow, gas-rich plane called the thin disk. Indeed. Our Milky Way galaxy has a thin disk, inside which we find our sun and most of the stars visible to the unaided eye in the night sky. It's the motion of these stars and gas clouds that create the apparent rotation of a galaxy. Stars in the thin disk take a more or less circular route around a galaxy. Traveling in ordered fashion because of collisions between the molecular gas clouds that form these stars. This has the effect of smearing out any extreme motions narrowing what is called the velocity dispersion, which describes the difference between the fastest and the slowest orbital velocities. A low velocity dispersion should see most stars on circular orbits, whereas a high velocity dispersion results in more random orbits. Previous studies have found that a galaxy's mass and how densely packed its environment is with neighboring galaxies may both play a role in controlling the propensity for random stellar motions. However, New research led by Australian astronomers finds that mass and environment are not the direct reason for the random motions, and that the real cause is something more insidious age. The age of a galaxy does not necessarily describe how long that galaxy has existed. It is thought that galaxies all formed in roughly the same era, around 13 billion years ago. Rather, age in this case is a condition, referring directly to a galaxy's star-forming activity. A galaxy still giving birth to new stars is considered younger while one in which star formation has ceased is described as old. There are two ways that star formation can be shut down inside a galaxy. One is through a phenomenon known as ram pressure stripping the thick, hot gas that inhabits galaxy clusters is able to heat a galaxy's gas as it plunges into the cluster. This causes the gas to be stripped out of the galaxy, leaving it without any material to form new stars. In dense environments, gravitational interactions between nearby galaxies can also stir up a galaxy's gas and prompt it into a frenzy of star formation called a starburst. Feedback in the form of radiation from hot, 
newly born stars in a starburst, or from jets coming from an active supermassive black hole that has switched on thanks to a large amount of matter funneled toward its maw by the interactions, can heat the gas in a galaxy and blow it into intergalactic space, preventing it from forming stars. Our Milky Way galaxy, it seems, was one of the lucky ones. Its thin disk has an estimated age of 8.8 .8 billion years. That thin disk, which is about 350 light years deep, is embedded in a thick disk, which is a much older torus of ancient stars. Those stars were born hotter with more random motions, which contributes to the thick disk being 1,000 light years deep, as those random motions are at steeper angles to the galactic plane. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.